can I first say it's uh, it's such a fantastic honour to be here, and I just want to thank Daisy. I really want to thank Daisy for inventing this idea. It's can we give him a round of applause? It's, it's, it's such a wonderful thing. And and Enrico as well for making it happen. And uh, I, I, I really appreciate it. And, and I know my, my, my brother, as I said before, my brother's been up here with uh, a, a little while back and, and he's going to be back up again soon with the Moonshine Dragon String Band. And um, I, I, I remember as a 16 year old going to see the Moonshine Dragon String Band at the Sussex Hotel and, uh, and just being in such awe of my brother and, and I still am in awe of my brother. And it was and it was from my brother that I that I copied the guitar because he's two and a half years older than me and he picked it up so naturally I picked it up and uh, uh, he he can't be here unfortunately tonight he's uh, having he, he has this concept of uh, three weeks work two weeks barley three weeks work two weeks <laughs> it's a lovely life uh, but um, as I said the, the first song. The first song, uh, uh, just a, a small uh, kind of a, a note, just a, I, I, I hate to say this, but I have to. Um, you're going to be disappointed with my voice because in 2010, I, I had my own version of cancer and it got into my neck and, and I lost about 80% of my voice. So I've, I've had to reinvent singing and I thank Jonathan Welch for helping me because uh, I don't know, Jonathan in Choir of Hard Knocks and all that. And uh, he, he's, he's a lovely guy and he came over to my house and I got to know Jonathan really well. And, and he said, come on man, start singing again. You know, come on, with, with whatever you've got, start singing. So I'm starting to sing. But, uh, so I can't really sing the old songs like I used to, which is a kind of a bummer. But, you know, you, you can't not say, you know, how, what a wonderful song Never Gonna Fall In Love Again was. Never gonna fall in love again I wanna stop with someone new But I couldn't bear to see it end Just like me you No, I never wanna feel the pain of a man just said Eric Carmen as a songwriter and years later um, because you remember at that time he wrote All By Myself that massive hit All By Myself and, and that song Never Gonna Fall In Love Again and years and years later um, what's her name uh, Celine Dion put out a version of All By Myself that was a massive massive global hit and it suddenly said Serge Rachmaninoff Eric Carmen because because Eric Carmen ripped off Serge Rachmaninoff and, and he thought Serge Rachmaninoff was out of copyright but he only died in 1917 so his grandkids got 40 million Celine Dion sales I mean come on that's ridiculous um, and my next song my next hit was uh, I, I hooked up with um, uh, I hooked up with uh, a guy called Richard Lush and Richard Lush produced all the Sherbet stuff and and I, and I was at the Logies in, in Melbourne in the, uh, at, the, at the Southern Cross it was in those days. 
and, and I was in I was in the lift, and Stig Anderson, the Abbas manager, was there. And I said, Stig, Mark Holt, I have a hit called Never No More, I'm the boxer. Um, you got any songs? <laughs> I was hoping I'd get a you know Bjorn and Benny song, and um, and he sent me a, a a song in Swedish, um, <laughs> and I translated it, and I was so bloody stupid, I didn't ask for the translation rights um, because that's anyway. But it was uh, it was called I'm gonna it was the Swedish thing was I'm gonna make you an angel and I changed it into I wanna make you my lady make you my lady love is so hard to find girl I just can't sing that one anymore it's so bloody high I've taken that down so low I can't take it any lower I wanna make you my lady and then there was another one immediately after that that was actually my biggest hit, but people don't actually remember it. Um, it's weird. It was, it was um, a song by, I think the best thing I did for, for Australian music um, was that I passed on a song by, called Lady. Remember that song Lady by Little River Band? I was pitched a bunch of songs, and I said, I can't just said I want to make him a lady. I can't, I can't do another song called Lady. And of course, then Little Bennett put it went to number five in America. <laughs> so I think that was my biggest contribution to Australian music at that time. <laughs> but uh, short of that, I, uh, I, I, I recorded a Big Birdle song, which was, which I, again, it's very difficult for me to sing, but it's... What's up? Pictures earlier on, but there was a picture of me with Bette Davis, 
and uh, the, the, the company got me this fantastic opportunity to be the kind of the star of the future. And, and uh, the idea was that I was in a bus and I turned up at Grauman's Chinese and I was met by Penny Davis and Jane Russell. Can you believe it? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's almost, I can't even believe it myself. And, and, uh, and Ben Davis was amazing. She was totally together. She allowed me to have that Polaroid. That was a Polaroid that was up there. She allowed, when I asked her for a signature, she said, no way. Well, Jane Russell was holed up in Man's Chinese Theatre, and when she finally came out, it was like 9.30 in the morning. She stank at booze, and oh, it was very, it was like the two different worlds. One, this extraordinary woman, Betty Davis, who was so together. And on the other hand, Jane Russell, who was, you know, a bit of a problem. In any case, it was supposed to be my big break. And, and two days before the, uh, the show went to air, I got my bloody wisdom tooth came in. And my whole side of my mouth was like this. And I'm trying to do the television show like with my, with my head like this on national American television. And it, it didn't work. <laughs> It didn't work, and I found myself out on my ass again. And uh, and so what I did was I uh, I, I, I won't get I, I believe in magic, and and I know it's look people have different views of religion and God and all that sort of thing. But but basically I meditated for a year. I sobered up. Uh, I meditated for a year. I wrote down my dreams, and at the end of that year I sort of analysed myself and, and I said, well, what do you really want to do? Was I going to come back to Australia with my tail between my legs, having left as a star, come back as a failure? Was that, was that going to be what I was going to do and maybe start law again? Or the other role to me, because I decided at that point that my voice wasn't really good enough. When you listen to a Glenn Sharp, for example, I mean, Glenn Sharp, man, that voice, is there a better voice in Australian or world? I mean, really, seriously. I mean, Glenn Shark, I got to do Shout with him, 101 performances with Shout, and just hearing him sing every night was such a privilege. Quick story, I know I've got a hurry here. <laughs> it was him and Colleen Hewitt, okay? Him and Colleen Hewitt were playing, um, were playing the mum and dad of uh, JOK. And, and, and Colleen, who I've come very close to, and I love Colleen, I absolutely adore her, but she is a tough-ass woman. She's a Bendigo country girl, man, and, and, and she does not take any shit from anyone. And she is a classical theatre star, so when the director directs it, that's how you do it every night. Glenn Shorrick is a rock and roller. He does never do it the same thing twice ever. You know, so he, he would, you know, be improvising and it would drive her crazy. And, and really, literally, a couple of the nights, a couple of the nights, she was going to deck him. I mean, and, I, and I don't mean, she was actually going to, like, lay Glennis out. <laughs> I don't know if that lost the story. The story was, the story was that I was out of my ass in, in, uh, in, in America and, and I meditated for a year. And at the end of that year, a whole chorus of this song, Melody and Lyrics, came into my head. And, and I had just decided at that point, no, I'm going to commit myself to being a songwriter. I'm going to commit myself, even though I've never had a hit as a songwriter, all the songs that I, that I had hits with in Australia that I just played you, none of them were mine. Um, they were all other people's songs. So I had no real justification to believe that I could be a songwriter. So, but I decided at that point, I'm going to be a songwriter. And this chorus came into my mind. And at, and at exactly that time, I met these two guys who were pitching songs at Berry Gordy. And, and I, I, I had this song in my mind, and I just uh, bought a THK track, and I, and I hooked up with a guy, a young, young guy that I wrote with, who's now in Paul McCartney's band. That's another great story, but I won't tell you that. But whenever you see Paul McCartney's band now, look for the blonde guy. Brian Ray's his name. What a fantastic story. Anyway, that's another story. Um, and, 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 I, and I went to his place and we and I demoed this song all on my own. I figured out how to use the T8 track. I, I laid all the parts down 
and and these guys played it to Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy loved it. Um, he played it to the Temps. They loved it. The Temptations recorded it, and it went to number four. And and hearing your own song, well, being in the studio with them, and it was just unbelievable. Just to be in that room, and and the, and they were they were all standing around Ollie and Otis and all those guys. It wasn't the original Temps. It was a kind of a still there were still three original Temps in it at that time. But they stood around in a circle and said, Mark, can you sing the melody so we can work, workshop the backgrounds? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, and then, and then um, Ollie went outside, and I don't actually know what he did in the car, but I have a sneaking suspicion. And, and he came in and he did two vocals, and that's all he did. And, and this the song was called Lady Soul. I'll just sing a little bit of it. That's where I met Mick. Hi, guys. Mick Ryan. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to make this quick because uh, we haven't got much time. Can I just get the guitar down in the fold wax? Please. Uh, we wrote this song together quickly. We didn't write it quickly. Well, we did, but no, we played it this way. Slow down, Dick. This is your audience. I know. It's my home town, actually. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, good to be back and playing with Mark Cardona. It's an honor to be on the same stage with such amazing musicians, so uh, thank you. Uh, and this song is, uh, we wrote this song about um, settlement and the uh, massacres of Aboriginal people during that time. So it's, you know, it's, a, it's a bit of a serious topic and a uh, serious song. And uh, we did a lot of research about it. Everything we wrote about is recorded in actual history. So it's factual. And uh, it's about uh, a place in Jordan called Bell Post Hill where they would ring the bell um, during settlement times when Aboriginal people would be coming in on the Golden Plain show out to do their seasonal harvest and uh, they would ring the bell and the settlement would come out from the valley and, and massacre the Aboriginal people. So. And, and the reason that this was, the reason that this connected us is because the Holdens turned up in in um, in that part of the world, the Ballarine, in 1852, and they broke out that land. They were poor Irish farmers, and 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 I was only taught the pioneer story. I was not taught the indigenous people's story. And the indigenous people's story is that that, that my family dispossessed those people, and 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 the ugly, ugly, ugly truth. And this is an ugly truth. The ugly truth is that within 20 years, there were only seven Wathorong people left within 20 years. And, and we know the names of the people and the names, and the names that we say in the song are the real names of the people. And they were never charged, they were never caught, called to justice in any way. And, and so it's the beautiful thing for Mick and I is to be able to um, talk about this 150 years later.
I'm going to bring out my son. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> this is my son Kane. He's, he's a musician as well, sad to say. Can't help himself, it's in the blood. Sorry about that, guys. Bang, noise. Okay, um, this is uh, one of the new songs with the new voice that, uh, that Kane's going to help me sing. We have uh, Archie Rose coming up next, it's going to be fantastic. Just want to say I love you. Very well deserved. Go on, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
my song. This is a this is a song I'm very proud of. That uh, that was the number one played song in Australia in 2001. I had a very good year that year. That was the year of Vanessa and and have a look. And then absolutely everybody. But this is the song that uh, this is the song that that I just love and that I wrote with Vanessa and and. Uh, and it was the number one most played song in 2001 in Australia. Uh, when, when she first played this to me in terms of the record, when the record came back and I heard her voice on it, I actually cried. Because I knew what, what it was about. I knew that I knew what she, the lyrics that she'd come up with, what, what they were about. And I, I, I'm very lucky to have worked with Vanessa. She's a magnificent artist and I love her dearly. Say that you never had a mom and nobody needs you, so cry, so cry. You believe that life rolls by just to deceive you, will bide your time.
a real honor. Thank you very much for making it a very special evening. Thank you. I'm going to pull this out now.